I tell you something I have noticed. God has a way of blessing those who give. I heard about a black preacher one time. He drove up to a conference he was to preach at. When he drove up, his car was just a jalopy. He got out, there was, his shoes were holy. That is H-O-L-E-Y. Full of holes, ready to come to part. His suit was just about getting a little raggedy. They preached a great message, just the same. God bless the service. Well, a year later, he was invited back to that same conference, and something happened. He drove up in a brand new car, nice and shiny. He had some new, brand new shoes, shined well. He was in a brand new suit, brand new tie, brand new shirt. And people asked him, brother, what happened to you? He said, me and the Lord got in the giving contest and I lost. That's one time I like to lose is when it comes down to giving the God, getting in a giving contest of God, because you can never outgive them. If you got your Bibles, I'm going to get right in the message this morning. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. I'm going to begin at verse 1. I'll go ahead and announce the title See in the Lord for Who He Is. See in the Lord for who he is. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. It's only 13 verses. I'm going to read all 13. In the year that King Uzziah died, I also I saw also the Lord sitting on the upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the, the seraphims. Each one had six wings, with twain he covered. His face with twain, he covered his feet with twain. Did he fly? One said unto another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And the whole earth was full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from, with tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine Iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. I also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but ye understand not. See ye indeed, that perceiveth not. <clears throat> make the heart of this people fat, make the, their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be, convert it and be healed. And said I, Lord, how long? He answered, till the cities be wasted without inhabitant. And then houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed man far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Yet in it shall be a tent, and it shall return. It shall be taken as a teal tree, as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall see, be the substance thereof. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this morning. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity. Father, I ask you to anoint me. Give me a heavier burden than I have now. Father, touch the people and help them see that, God, you are still here. 
you still want to do a work here and that they should learn to trust you wholly in Jesus' name. Amen. See in the Lord for who he is. You know, this was written, this happened to Isaiah not long after King Uzziah died. There's different schools of thought why it says in that year the King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. I'm of the camp that, that Isaiah was friends with Uzziah. Some people may not agree, Brother John, but does that really matter? Some just say it was just marking the year of his death. I believe there was more to it. Let me explain why. Number one, if you read about Uzziah, also known as Azariah, in 2 Kings chapter 15 and in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, you'll see that he was one of the righteous kings of Judah. He was one of the ones that sought the Lord. But only sought it according to the way I understand in the days of Zechariah the prophet. But even so, he was the righteous king. And when he served the Lord, in that period of time he served the Lord, God really blessed him. God really anointed Uzziah. And God had his hand on him in a unique way. You know, there was a lot of things he done. I'm not going to give every list, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, if you want to ever read about him, he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah, as it says in verse, chapter 26, verse 5. As long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him to prosper. I think that would help each and every one of us to remember. As long as you seek the Lord, he will prosper your way. Prosperity does not always mean financial prosperity. But guess what? I'm not against it. Amen. I'll just say this briefly as a testimony. When I left Florida earlier this year, went back to Virginia, things were not looking good for me financially. Things did not look good at all. I didn't know where I was going. I just went back to the Salvation Army shelter. Thank God they had a place for me. And meanwhile, I had to find a job, and it didn't take long. I worked for Point Pickup down in Florida. And they were amazed I was making three and four hundred dollars a week because most people who work for that group don't make that much, but I was. Why? I believe God was blessing me for several reasons. Number one, the way I saw them, but more importantly, maybe not necessarily more importantly, but also because I believe in paying my tithes and offerings and being faithful to them. Doesn't it say he'll open up a heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain? I came back to Virginia not knowing what it was going to happen. I couldn't get back of Point Pickup. I tried to get in with DoorDash. Finally, I applied for Uber. After they done a background check, they sent me out. First few day week didn't look too good, only about 400 some dollars. But then something happened. Next thing you know, I'd be looking at how much I was making during the week, and it was over $800. Amen. God blessed me in a miraculous way. I had to work long and hard hours. But I also had faith in God. And he did bless. And I'm going to tell you something. As long as you seek him, you can count on him blessing you. Yes, sometimes even financially. Left the Salvation Army uh, Army uh, shelter on September 4th, the day after my 62nd birthday. I signed the papers on my 62nd birthday. I'm one guy that's been known to give himself birthday presents. Back on my 56th birthday, I gave myself a present by going to a brush arbor meeting out in Oklahoma. <laughs> this year, I gave myself a, a present by signing papers for an apartment over in Middletown, Virginia. And on September 4th, I officially moved in. And I'm thankful for that little apartment. It may not be very big, but it's just me, myself, and I. So I really don't need a big place. I'm thankful for what he has done. But back to us, ready to say he prospered him. Amen. He warred against the Philistines and had great victories. He broke down the walls of Gath, of Ashdod, and Jephthah. God helped him in battle. The Ammonites gave him gifts to him. He was being greatly used to God as long as he sought him. He built the 
towers in Jerusalem. You know, back in those days, cities almost had to have towers. What do you mean? If they didn't have towers, an enemy could come in and invade and do a lot of damage. He dug wells so they had much water. And he made, had even a great army. God had his hand upon Uzziah. And I do believe that, that Isaiah the prophet knew Uriah. I believe he was actually friends with him. But one day, Uzziah made a great, done a great sin that literally destroyed him. It says when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to destruction. The Bible says pride go before destruction and a high spirit before a fall. The Bible says God resists the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. I tell you something, we need to walk humbly with the Lord. One verse I've always wanted to preach a whole message on, haven't yet, but I hope to one of these days, Lord will. Micah 6, 8, he has shown thee, O oh man, what doth the Lord require thee, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Oh, humility is important in this hour. Amen. He exalteth, he abaseth the proud, may give grace unto the humble. I'm telling you something this morning. As long as he walked in his humble before the Lord, God blessed him. But one day, and I'm at the camp, he saw something going wrong in the temple. It happens, doesn't it? I don't know exactly all the things that was going wrong. Sometimes I've learned being in church work for over 30 years, Brother John, there's times I see problems rise up in the church and I would love to deal with it. I'm not necessarily talking about when I was pastor. But there was times I had to, I felt like saying something. Either when I was teaching a Sunday school class, but the Lord gave me restraint, said, remember, Uzziah. Remember, stay in your place. Sometimes you like to take care of situations, grab them by the neck, and the Lord will say, don't. Don't. Pray for him, but keep your hands off. I don't know what was going wrong. Maybe the priests were not doing their job right. Maybe some other things was going on, but God did not want him to offer incense upon the altar of incense. And he took it upon himself to do it. And when it happened, what happened? The priests, when they saw him getting out of his place, uh, they went to him and they warned him not to do it. Now, I know some people may not see it like this, but he held, as he held the censer of incense in his hand, Uzziah, Uriah, the hit, Uriah was King Uriah. Suddenly, it says he was wroth. I'm going to tell you what I believe was happening. It doesn't necessarily say it, but I believe when he held it up, I believe he held it up in the sense he was ready to do harm to the priest. You know what happened? Suddenly, his flesh became leprous. He was stricken with leprosy. And after that, Uriah, the great king, became a leper and died in a several house our house of separation. I believe it broke the heart of Isaiah to see Uriah pass away. I believe it, it crushed him very much. I believe he went to the altar to pray one day. And as he was there, something happened. I believe sometimes it's easy for us to get our eyes on man, isn't it? Let's face it, we all have, amen? I have. And sometimes man will let you down. But what happened? He went that day to the altar. He went that day to the temple. And God spoke to him in a most miraculous and unique way. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, also, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up in his train, filled the temple, you know, he was there. He saw the Lord. He saw the Lord for who he is. 
I'll tell you something. It would help each and every one of us if we could just get in this book right here. Get on our knees and pray and learn to see the Lord for who he is and learn to trust him for who he is and learn to call him for who he is. Sometimes things happen in our lives that cloud us. I'll be honest with you. You know, I believe a man ought to work. The Bible says if a man not work, let him not eat. He that, that careth not for his own is worse than an infidel. Provide not for his own. It's worse than an infidel and if denied the faith. So I believe a man should work. And I'm of the camp a man should work hard. Now I'm not advocating you work 12 hours a day. Sometimes you have to. Amen. I sometimes work that much. I believe we need to give a good day's work for a good day's pay. I believe that. I have no trouble with the eight hour Dave, because I believe a man also ought to provide other things for his family. He ought to provide comfort for his family. He ought to provide protection for his family. You know, I'm against gun control. Because I believe that's part of providing for your family, for a man to have a gun in the house. Hide it from the children, but make sure it's where you know it's where if you or your wife has to use it because of an intruder breaking in your house at three in the morning. Come on. Come on. Now enough on that. But I believe that tonight we need to provide protection. We need to provide comfort. We need to provide children time with us so they can get to know us and get to understand the ways of God even better, teach our children the ways of God, read the scriptures. But yes, I believe a man needs to work and work hard. So that's where I'm at. I believe in the six-day work job. Five days is okay, but I believe sometimes, but I definitely believe in the Sunday day of worship. And I'm strong on it. If you look at my YouTube channel, I have a message on that issue about why Sunday worship. Some people say, oh, Brother Roy, you're getting legalist. You know why? One of the strong reasons why I believe Sunday is the day of worship? Because it's a sign that we're no longer under the law, but under grace. It don't sound like legalism to me. It sounds like obedience to Christ, doesn't it? Amen. But enough there. There was Uzziah, there was Isaiah. He now was looking up to the Lord. Maybe perhaps in his friendship with Uriah, he got some clouding. But that day, the Lord changed everything. He looked up, and above it stood the seraphims. He saw angels of God. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. Oh, we have to sometimes realize how holy God is. You know, I believe that when men look upon the face of God in this flesh, I believe it will consume them. I do. But thank God we can look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who's our advocate with the Father, who's our intercessor with the Father, he ever lived to make intercession. He's our mediator between God and man. We can go to him any time of the day or night. We may need to talk to an attorney, but we'll have to wait till their time. We may have to talk to a doctor, but sometimes, you know, the way things are going with COVID, I imagine it's not always going to be easy to get in the emergency room. But you can call on Jesus anytime. He saw the angels. They covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. With twain, he did fly. And this is what I like about the angels. One cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Can I tell you something? I believe in the love of God. I thank God the greatest love is the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says that God committed his love towards us and while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. I believe the, one of the best pictures in the Bible of the, of the Father is the 
is the prodigal's father who was waiting for that his lost son to come home. I believe in the love of God. If you ask me, Chip, what's his chief attribute? It's not his love. It's not his justice. It's not his wrath. It's not his sovereignty. It's his holiness. The Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. God calls himself in the first person holy. Throughout the word of God, when you see the angels worshiping him, they're there in Isaiah 6 and once again, Revelation chapter 4. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, I tell you, <clears throat> before I went to Bible school, I struggled a lot with some issues involving the nature of God. You know, you'd hear some overemphasize the love of God at times. You hear some overemphasize the wrath. Guess what? I preach them both, Brother John. I believe in preaching a heaven to gain, a hell to shun. And I believe the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, that cleanses us from all sin. God made that way in Calvary. So I, yes, I believe in the love of God. I believe in the wrath of God. But finally, when I went to Bible school, I was taught the main attribute of God being His holiness. Everything, Brother Denver, fell in place. You know what his holiness is? You've seen these old time wheels you know, they had on wagon trains. The spokes represent his attributes such as his love, his sovereignty, his mercy, his wrath, his justice. But the will itself is his holiness. And when you can see that, it'll cause you to think different of things. It'll cause you to understand God. No, we can better. I want to use the word better. As nobody can understand God fully. Amen. Amen. He saw God in his full holiness. The post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. I'll tell you something. When God's in our presence, it should sometimes move some post. I preached a message one time. Well, actually more than once. Earthquakes we need. Amen. Pardon me for getting the sidetrack a bit, but I think this is this illustrates the message good. In Matthew chapter 28, we read about an earthquake right after Jesus rose from the dead. We need that earthquake of resurrection power. In Acts chapter 4, they had, the earth shook when they prayed for the Holy Ghost to refill them. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. But I believe we often need to be refilled at times. What do you mean? I believe in the initial experience called the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but I believe we need more power to stand in this hour than we ever have. Amen. I'll tell you what happened. They prayed because they knew they needed more of God than they ever did. When they prayed, the place shook. Holy Ghost power. An earthquake of the Holy Ghost power. Amen. And one more great earthquake. When Paul and Silas was in jail, they uh, were there singing and praising God at the midnight hour. Amen. And guess what happened? They had an earthquake hit that jail. Uh, an earthquake of uh, regenerative power. Let me explain what happened. I believe every prisoner got saved there in that jail. Not only that, but the prison keeper got saved. Not only that, but his whole family got saved before that before the morning came and they ministered to their wounds. I tell you something this morning. We need the whole, the resurrection power. We need, amen, the regenerative power and the Holy Ghost power, revival power. It shook the pillars. And one more thing happened. The house was filled with smoke. No, not dealing with cigarettes, God forbid. But I'll tell you what it was. It was a Shekinah glory entering that, that temple that day. And Isaiah looked up. He saw the Lord for who he was. And something happened to him in that moment. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone. We get in the presence of God, we'll sometimes see our own sinfulness, 
I didn't say we weren't saved, Brother John. I didn't say we weren't saved. I'm saying sometimes we'll see our own unworthiness. We'll see how undone we really are. We may think we've gotten to a high level of Christian maturity. Then we get in the presence of God. Then we see how wicked and how sinful we really are. It's only by His grace we're saved. It's only by His grace we're kept. It's only by His grace that we shall stand for, uh, to the end. He saw how sinful He really was. He said, woe is me, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst the people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts when he saw the lord for who he was in his pure holiness he saw how undone he really was he saw how much he needed more of god than ever he saw how much he needed to trust the lord more now than ever he saw how impure he was some people could have probably looked at Isaiah and said he was the most holy man in Israel. He probably was. But he also saw in his own eyes he wasn't. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a, a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from off the altar and laid it upon my mouth. And said, Lo, this have touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. You know what I'd like the Lord to do for me this morning? I like Him not only to purge my mouth, I like Him to purge my heart, I like Him to purge my mind, I like Him to purge my hands, I like Him to purge my feet. I always like, like Simon Peter said after he refused. To let the Lord wash his feet. He said, warned him that if he didn't wash his feet, he, you know, it wasn't, he wouldn't be his. Or however he warned him. He said, then Lord, not only my hand, my feet, but my hands also. Oh, we all need washed inward and outwardly. We need our mouths clean. We need our minds clean. We need to be sanctified holy. But then something else happened. As a result of the cleansing, I also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who shall go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. You know, I believe part of the problem of the modern church is they're not wanting the sanctifying power of God in their life. They're not wanting the Lord to cleanse their life. They're wanting to hang on to things of the world. They say, oh, it's not all that bad. You know what? If, it's, if God tells you to get rid of it, I don't care what it is, Brother John. I know a lady who was wearing a certain type of shoes. There was nothing wrong with the shoes. The lady even told me that because it happened to have been my first wife, Cindy. She said there was a certain type of shoe she would wear. And to look at it, you wouldn't think there was anything wrong, but the Lord dealt with her. I think it was because of some pride she had in those shoes and it was making her puffed up. The Lord told her, Cindy, get rid of them. Nothing wrong with it. It's just it was leading to her pride, which could lead to her downfall. Are you willing to give anything up for the Lord? I believe we need to be. Are you willing to do anything for the Lord? We need to. He sent, gave Isaiah the call, hear my and send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed and understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut thine eye, their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears. Understand, be with their heart and be and convert and be healed. Now I want you to know, it may sound like the Lord was trying to say to him, Oh, blind these people. Don't let them see. Don't even let them be converted. I don't believe that was necessarily the message. The message was show them how blind they really are. That's the way I read it. Show them how undone you they really are. Show them how they need to get right. And then let them be converted. 
That's just kind of the way I read it. I'm not Calvinist in the least degree. About the closest thing I believe with them is the total depravity. After that, I throw the rest of that tool about. <laughs> but this morning, he was given the commission. He saw the Lord for who he was. This morning, I believe God wants to do a work here in this church again, Brother John. God told me to preach this message, and I believe it was a message. The message is, get your eyes on him. Get your eyes on the cross. Get your eyes on how holy the Lord really is. How he paid that awful price for each and every one of us. He was a holy God, a sinless man, who took the sins of all of us so we could be saved. Why did the Lord, say, why did Jesus say on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken the meek? He took the sins of all mankind and the Father could not look upon him. But thank God he did it for you and me. He rose to, from the dead three days later. It's time for us to see God for who he is. How do we do it? Through faithful study of his word. Amen. Through prayer daily and talking to him regularly. Letting him deal with you about the directions you need to go in the ministry in your life. The Lord tells you not to go a certain place. Don't go it. I know the sister is now deceased, Linda Tobman. She was a, a missionary to, uh, to Taiwan. You have to understand something about Taiwan it's a free nation, isn't it, as far as democracy? But sin-wise, it's a cursed nation. She once visited a temple. She owned a Buddhist temple. God allowed her to do it, but there was one room. <coughs> she went to, the Lord said, don't you even dare go in. Sometimes as Christians, God will tell us to go places, and sometimes he'll tell us, don't. We need to be led. After we get to see him for who he is and get the cleansings in our life, then it's time to listen for what he wants us to do. I believe the Lord wants to work here, Brother John. I believe God desires to work here. I believe God desires to fill the pews of Hearts Chapel once again. I don't know. I just really feel... I believe God is not through of Hearts Chapel. It may look hopeless. It may look like it'll never happen. Just keep on. Keep looking to the Lord. Keep seeing Him for who He is. Let Him deal with you. Let Him sanctify you. And then be willing to go out in the highways and hedges and compel Him to come in. This morning, I believe the world still needs to hear the message. Oh, everybody's already heard. I disagree. There was a time if you said there was nobody here in America that's never heard the gospel, I would have frowned on you, Brother John. Not now. <clears throat> I believe there's people right here in America, and I'm not talking about the foreigners coming in. I'm talking about people born and raised here in this country. have never heard the gospel. They may know about a little bit about God, but they don't know the way to God through Jesus Christ. They may have seen Bibles on, on uh, people's coffee tables, but they have never dared to look at it. This morning, I believe God wants each and every one of us to go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. I believe the Lord is, wants to do something here. And this morning, I'm going to close and ask everybody to come and pray. God will start helping each and every one of us. Hey, I need this message just as much as the rest because I can, I like to see the Lord better. I like to see my spiritual glasses cleansed a little bit better because I want to see the Lord for who he is. One prayer, and I've often prayed, and I'm going to close with this. There's times in my Christian experience when I start finding myself getting me a little cold, or maybe when I start finding myself getting a little angry, 
Or maybe when I find myself not spending as much time praying as I need to, I sometimes pray this prayer. Lord, help me have the love and the zeal for you. Renew the love and the zeal I had for you from when I was first saved. That's all. Find a place to pray and ask God to sanctify us, help us see him for who he is, and to you.